I stood there at the sink with my left hand full of my mom's Valium pills and in my right a glass of water. I felt depressed and hopeless, and then I had this thought. I can leave home in four years when I'm 16. I put the pills away and I went to sleep. I began drinking and smoking pot as a way to escape. Even though I was only a teenager, my parents let me sit around the keg and go to the bars with them. That was the only time me and my mom got along. I quit school when I was 15 and left home a year later like I said I would. I could finally do what I wanted, so I went to live with my brother who was stationed in Alaska. There I met my first husband and married him at 17. I thought he was my ticket to get away from all the abuse and dysfunction at home in the Sioux. My people came from Sugar Island and were relocated to Shunk Road, where my family lived in a house without indoor plumbing and we were very poor. We sometimes relied on my grandma to provide us with something to eat. We even had sponsors like in a third world country. Ma had divorced my dad when I was four and then remarried. I was the eldest of six at home and often I had to take care of my younger siblings. I grew up in an alcoholic family and endured emotional, physical, and sexual abuse. I found refuge in spending time with my grandma. My gram was completely loving, accepting, and gave me encouragement. She always believed in me. I did well in school and felt appreciated by my teachers. I found safety from the chaos when I was in church. My marriage ended after the birth of my son because, like me, my husband was an alcoholic. After that, I was in and out of relationships with men who were alcoholics, addicts, and abusive. I managed to go to college, had another child, and continued to use alcohol, pot, and pills. During my mid-twenties, I started having panic attacks, and my depression started getting worse. I thought I was going crazy. The thing I valued the most was my mind, and I couldn't bear to lose that. Around the same time, I had a dream where my gram handed me her old red Bible and said, To thine own self be true. She told me to read about it in the Bible. I didn't think much more about the dream. I planned again to take my life. Not because I wanted to die, but because I just couldn't go on with the guilt, shame, self-hate, and panic attacks. Death seemed like a viable option. I woke up in the hospital feeling angry because I failed. Then the nurse sitting next to me said, God has a plan for you. While in the psych ward in Marquette, the psychiatrist told me, you're an alcoholic. If you quit drinking, your panic attacks will go away. I was not crazy. I was an alcoholic. It was like a ray of hope. I was grateful that I was alive and could choose to change my life. I didn't have to live that way anymore. I tried to stay sober but relapsed, went to treatment for six months, relapsed again, and finally got sober for good at the age of 29 on October 10, 1993. Ani, My spirit name is White Bear Woman, and I'm Bear Clan. My other name is Karen Alexander. My dad is George Alexander from Salt Lake City. My mom was Catherine Bully, an Ojibwe from Sugar Island. My grandmother was Mariah Bully. My great-grandparents were Norman Bully and Louise Williams. My great-great-grandparents were Catherine Joseph and Edward Bully. My other great-great-grandmother was Angeline Toto Williams. My great-great-great-grandmother was Nedimuk. I've lived most of my life in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. My life has been amazing since I got sober. In the beginning, I relied heavily on AA and then my native ways. I've had the privilege of taking part in sweat lodges, fasting, and other ceremonies. To this day, prayer is the most important part of my life. Just like Graham suggested, I learned to be true to myself. I raised two children and adopted two more as a sober mom. I have four beautiful grandchildren. I love learning and going to school. I have a Master of Social Work degree and have the honor of helping other people who are on a healing journey. I'm also working on my PhD in evaluation. I'm grateful for my good life.